Okay, so let us create our first project with Keel A IDE, Keel Microvision IDE. So we'll see how to write a semi language program with the help of this Keel IDE. We'll uh, convert the assembly code into the corresponding object code, that is, we'll assemble it. And then we'll see how to uh, debug or see, check the result. Here, I'm going to take the simple example of addition. So let's see how to create a simple project. So you have to say, open the Keel Microvision software. First, you have to click on the project the tab over here. Next, click on new Microvision project. It will open this dialog box which asks you to save your project so it is always recommended to save the project in a new folder so that you will not say, combine the files of different projects together so here i have created say folder in on the desktop called as a lab so in this parent folder i will call this lab folder as my parent folder every time i create a new project i have to create say a new a folder that is a good idea so i'll create a new folder there and i will give it a relevant name so let us give it a name say program 04 so you can develop your own convention for the naming here i'm continuing with say uh, the previous names which i have given so this is program underscore 04 folder i will open this folder now and our project has been saved over there you can save the project with any name there is no specific constraint to be consistent i'm going to say again give the same name as a, my folder name to the project we'll click on save once project is saved it will ask us to select the appropriate a processor platform here we are going to work with arm7 for that you have to click on software package the legacy device database that is the second option coming over here okay then in the search window you can type arm7 okay so arm7 big indian little indian okay which is a 32 bit uh, disk uh, processor platform you can select arm7 little indian click on okay so on left hand side you will see there is our project uh, okay, explorer uh, first our target device you can click on this plus sign to expand it and in that you can have different source group uh, source code groups so currently by default there is a single source code group so under this source code uh, group we can say, populate our say, assembly uh, asm files assembly language files also same id can be used to create the uh, or to work with the c program or c++ program also so uh, let us uh, go for the assembly language program first for that we create a blank say, text we'll open a blank text editor for that we have to click on file new okay and uh, this blank text editor has to be first saved with the extension as dot asm where we'll save we'll save this into the same folder where our project lies so we'll go to file save now I have to browse clearly. I have to go to lab fo lab folder that was my parent folder and newly created folder say program underscore zero four. Why I'm specifically say uh, checking whether I'm saving in the correct folder or not. The reason is by default sometimes this ID you open it can say open a path by default path say which maybe you might have given the similar name. So here you have to always make sure that you are saving your source code file in the correct say, uh, folder over there. So path should be checked is desktop slash lab slash or a newly created folder. And we'll save this file with some relevant name again. You can give any name. Okay. So I'm giving the name again as a program underscore 04. An extension should be dot ASM. Okay. So it is very important that our extension has to be a uh, rigorously followed it has to be a dot asm extension okay so yeah 
program for dot asm so this dot asm part is very important for them okay so we will save this file in our the program for folder next step is this particular file which we have created okay this program for dot asm file we are supposed to add to our source group one to our project then only it will get some it will get assembled or if it would have been a c file then only our compiler I will be able to compile that file. Okay, so here we have to how to add it is simple. Just right click on the source group one and click on add existing files to say group source uh, group one. We have already created. We are just going to add it over there. Okay, so right click on source group one, click on add existing files to group source group one. Okay, again check whether you are Say taking the files from the correct folder, there might be multiple say folders called as a program for. It's always good idea that path is correct to check whether they are say uh, path is correct or not. So this desktop slash lab slash program for. Okay. Uh, next thing which you need to check is the file type. So if you are working with the assembler say assembly language program, then our file type uh, to be displayed should be the asm source file so sometimes by default it shows us uh, this particular option as c source file is okay, there so if the c source file is selected then your asm or assembly language files will not be visible okay so it is essential to click on asm source file then only your assemble assembler file will be okay, visible Sometimes this uh, extensions may or may not be visible. Dot asm or dot c based upon uh, the properties which you have set in your say, computer. Okay. So once uh, you select, so here we are focusing on assembly program. That's why I have selected file type as asm source file. I will click on say, program four. I will click on add. Once I click on add, that's it. If I click okay, multiple times, it does not okay, make any difference. Okay, just okay. Once you can click on all, or you can double click on that file also. So this file will get basically added to our source group one, which we can verify by okay, expanding that okay, particular okay, uh, file uh, project explorer over here. Okay. So now let us write a simple program of addition. Okay, so I will copy from. Uh, the copy this particular program here. So as I mentioned before, okay, that your program should have a certain syntax to be followed. Okay, so here we are uh, creating a code uh, memory segment, which is again a read-only memory segment. So data can or instructions uh, basically which are there in this section can be uh, only read. You cannot say write while uh, your program is getting executed okay, in this particular section. So, whatever reason of blue are the keywords, and okay, basically the black uh, labels are the user defined or have been generated by me. So, you can write anything in place of whatever is there in the black. Okay, so these are called as the labels, and the comments are given with the help of the semicolon. In case of assembly code, uh, the comments are preceded by the Semicolon. Okay, so semicolon says that particular ignore whatever is coming after that semicolon. Okay. So here uh, we are performing say addition of two numbers or uh, two 32 bit values. So first 32 bit value is going to be stored in R0. Okay. Next one is stored in R1, and we are basically performing the operation R2 equal to R1 plus R0. And because we don't have the halt instruction in case of a processor, uh, we have to use some trick like this where this B is a branch instruction and we are asking say, this branch instruction to branch to the same line. So this is kind of an infinite loop. So your program starts executing line by line. And once it comes to this branch instruction, it will keep executing the same instruction and it will not come out of this particular loop unless you hit the say, reset. Or some interrupt is generated. Okay. So let us build the target. Okay. So to build the target, you can go to the project and say okay, there is the build target option over there. Okay. Uh, another shortcut is over here on left hand side top. 
can find the similar build target option so you can use any one this is a build target as soon as they click on that build target they, it will start creating the to start checking the syntax and it will convert the assembly code into the object code uh, another thing which is really important if you want to now check the result you are supposed to create a particular file format of this uh, object code called as hex code for that another setting to be done is you have to click on now target one over here right click on target one go to options for target one okay right click on target one options for target one it will open this dialog box in dialog box in the dialog box you have to click on the output tab and you have to enable this create hex file option okay so this will ensure or create a particular object file in the hex format and which can be used by our say, debugger to check the result okay so once you have enabled the settings again i have to say build target now this will create the hex file so along with the compilation it will generate the hex file uh, so you can see that message here creating the hex file happening without any errors any warnings so if there are any errors or warnings in your code then uh, your hex file will not be created for example say one of the errors i'm uh, doing say deliberately and putting something like that lr equal to if i forget to write so what will happen with this if i say assemble or build target it will throw an error okay so this is the error it will uh, tell you that this error is on line number is six so whatever is in the bracket so this round bracket there is error and uh, the short description of that error is given so that is your job to now go to that line say and say, uh, try to fix that error once you are uh, you find uh, the solution you can just say build a target again so it is essential that before checking the final result say uh, you should get the zero errors and preferably zero warnings say uh, so that you can check the result so our result is basically addition of these 332 bit numbers and we are using this ldr instruction which is a pseudo a read instruction uh, or pseudo load instruction in case of this particular uh, uh, ide so let us quickly run it so go to debug go to start stop debug session okay so same uh, field is used to start as well as when we are in a debug session i have to click on the same field to stop the debug session so let us start it now so yeah it will give us this warning that okay the software we are using is in evaluation mode and there is the code limit we will accept it and yeah so our debugger will be launched like that so on the left hand side okay if i take this little bit apart you can see all the registers which are uh, available okay, to the user are populated from r0 to r15 we have our cpsr current program status register the middle window is basically our asm code and the upper window over here is the disassembly code or the the instructions which are ex actually say uh of course which have been uh, actually generated from our instructions those you can see okay. so at the zeroth address you can see the opcode for this ldr instruction for example ldr r0 equal to say abcd the equivalent opcode is like this it is a 32 bit instruction so uh, e5 9f0008 so this is the actual op code to which or instruction code which has been generated from this instruction and you can see the execution okay so one way is using the stepwise execution okay so i will click and see the result after executing individual instructions so let us do that so this is the step execution you have to click on it if i click on it it will execute the first instruction say uh, indicated by this say blue and yellow arrow and we can obviously see that the result is contents of r0 register are getting updated okay, to the required value similarly you can say execute the next instruction so next r1 will be updated with value 1111 okay so like that i'm sorry 
uh, you can execute the next instruction which is r2 equal to r1 plus r0 so the addition of both the register and the serum r2 equal to r1 plus r0 and then we can uh, we are stuck at this particular line so now if i keep on executing this particular instruction multiple times they will not come out of the program so this kind of a uh, program is you can think of getting halted okay. so that is how you can write a assembly code and check its uh, results so this was very simple program okay. and if you want to go back to your uh, uh, main uh, 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 asm code you have to first or if you want uh, to edit some data first uh, say you have to stop the debug session so if i want to check the result of addition of different numbers you have to load those numbers over there okay for example say i have added different number so for that you should not be whenever you want to edit anything you should not be in a debug mode okay so you have to stop the debug session come back to the, the normal uh, editor window build the target once you edit anything in your code you are supposed to build the target create the new hex files corresponding to this code and you can okay, then only you can check the result okay, with a similar process okay. so one way was the step execution another way is the okay, run instruction over here so this particular run instruction will execute the program okay and uh, in a continuous mode okay so if i run this you can see it is okay, showing nothing over here because now it is infinitely executing this particular instruction it is stuck over there so if I want to check the intermediate result, I will just stop the simulation. And we can see uh, the current status over here being R0 is this value, R1 is this, and the result of addition is over here. Okay. So that is how you can check the result of, or of the addition of the particular bit number. So yeah, that is the end of this particular video. Thank you for watching this video.